vote yes to repeal the 8th um, because I believe that women should have full right to care. I've come from Norwich today, so up at 5am <laughs> to get a train down to London and then London to Hollyhead and But that could be me. That could be me if I choose to have a child in Ireland. No one in Ireland under the age of 53 has ever had a chance to vote on legalising abortion, until now. Even in cases of rape, abortion is illegal. The punishment for having one is up to 14 years in prison and is only ever permitted if a woman's life is deemed to be at risk. Now, Irish voters will decide whether to repeal or retain the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution, the law responsible for the ban. Added in 1983, the Eighth Amendment gives an equal right to life to the woman and the unborn. It engraved a pro-life position into Ireland's constitution, thanks to campaigning by Catholic and pro-life groups. My brain worked very politically. And the very thought, and I don't know who came up with it, I said, that is it. We'll get something into the constitution, and if there ever is a, uh, an effort to legalise abortion, at least the Irish people will be consulted. The pro-life group decided very articulate group, very clever group, to put the fear of God into every politician in Ireland about the issue of abortion. I'll never forget, as long as I live, as Minister for Health being told that a woman, that she was denied cancer treatment uh, because the hospital were afraid that it would damage the fetus. The woman died in agony, I know that, as Minister I was told that, and the child didn't survive either. We spoke to two parents whose daughter was affected by the abortion laws. It angers me that we had to go across to Liverpool to sort out um, Arlette's terrible predicament knowing what, what it was, you know, because she was, she was distraught. No kidneys, um, as it was a half a heart and a hole in that bit of the heart and there was these cystic fib fibromas on the back of her head which are like huge big bulging things on the back of her head. So like that child had never ever got a chance. A woman needs to be in a place where she can access emergency services if they are required and that place is not an airplane. There's two different types of treatment that women can have, there's medical and surgical, um, and both carry risks. She couldn't do it. The decision was made then that there was only one way out for her, and that was the termination. I couldn't believe it that there was nothing here that we could do about it. You know, and, and then I, uh, we were fortunate in so far as that we're not, we're not wealthy or we're not well off, or, but we could afford that, you know, to help her to get something done here, but no, there was nothing. I became a midwife um, because I want to look after women. A lot of Irish women will try to come to the UK, have their treatment and fly back home in the same day. Um, and this carries significant risks to their health. I remember hugging her and says, that's, mum, I feel fine. I really do, I feel I've made the right decision here. She's very white and pale looking and just, you just looked down at her, she was sleeping on the ferry, then on the couch, and I just thought, oh, God, this is an awful thing altogether. What are we doing, you know? Really trying to persuade these women who are already terrified to go against every single gut feeling that they have and remain in the UK a little bit longer. They come in and it's degrading to them that they're there because they've had to make this incredible journey, this completely unnecessary journey, um, from their own home. She terminated uh, poor Skye's life in the way she did. It was the most humane thing to do. It was the proper and only thing to do for any compassionate person and anybody who says otherwise is lacking something. In Ireland, there must be a referendum in order for any change to be made to the Constitution. This vote today is about a better future and leaving a cruel, oppressive past behind. A past that shamed, judged, criminalised women. And we're moving on for, from all of that. And we will have healthcare here at home for the first time. And the hypocrisy will end. 
It's, it's a first and this is momentous. You can't underestimate how historic this is. It's historic change coming soon. We're in Dublin city centre talking to people about the referendum today and we noticed the two people stood behind us. Got a pretty big banner so you'd think the vote's something they're quite passionate about, but they won't speak to us. It turns out they're Americans. I guess we won't know why they want to get involved. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the proposal is literally abortion uh, for not, you know, for any reason up to three months, you know, so I, I sorry, I, co I just couldn't support, um, in fact, I can't support abortion at all. It's not the answer. It never, it, it, it never, you know, is the answer. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a human rights, um, you know, disaster of the, of the 20, 20th and 21st century. I mean, one in three women in Ireland face a crisis pregnancy and it's just not dealt with here. We export our problems to the UK, as I'm sure you're fully aware. Um, and that's just like, it just makes me a little bit ashamed of my country because that, sh that, that shouldn't have to happen. It as I understand it, it's the first opportunity anyone under the age of 53 has had to actually vote on abortion. Exactly. So literally everyone of fertile age um, wasn't able to vote back then. I mean, I think my mom was even a teenager. We, we can only just see what happens tomorrow. There's an exit poll um, at about 11 on RTE, um, so I'm waiting for that. Um, all I can do is just try and remind people to vote. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I feel like if we can get everyone to vote, we might win it. It'll be really, really slim, but I'm really hopeful. We're at Dublin Castle awaiting the official announcement of the referendum result. Last night, exit polls came in and they were overwhelmingly in favour of repealing the country's ban on abortion. The atmosphere here is really jubilant, really celebratory. People are singing, people are hugging each other, people are crying. The exit poll came out and I just like, I like took me a few minutes to register and then I just like, like, like well, like I just like couldn't handle it, anything. I couldn't even speak. I was like shaking, just like so emotional. Like everyone around me was just cheering. Because um, we all knew, like, even though no one even spoke, we all just knew, like, what we were all happy for, because we all, like, got the same, like, notification from the newspaper, and we were just like, I can't believe it. Like, and, and by so much, like, it wasn't even that close, like, I can't, like, I'm going to cry, sorry. I just can't believe it. It's the best day ever, like, I, we all worked so hard for it, and here it is. It feels like there's just a huge change coming and it's here, this is it, like it's just, everyone's just so hot, like walking around town, like you know it, like you can see it. Um, and those guys are so amazing, they were singing at the Spire two days ago as well, they changed all the lyrics to suit the referendum. Um, yeah, I just like... Beth, congratulations, well Enjoy yourself. Thank you so much. Thanks, Enjoy this guys. moment, you deserve it. Hi. Can I ask you to do something for me? Yeah. Is that still rolling? Yeah, it's still rolling. Here's a copy of the Constitution. Oh. <laughs> Here's a copy of the Eighth Amendment. Oh my I'd like God. you to help me erase this by striking through. Could you? Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, by striking <laughs> through one, any one of the words in those three paragraphs. Just pick a word and strike through. Thank you very much. One word at a time, we're taking it out. Thank you.